All right, Tiffany, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Viewpoint Show. Oh, my mic is muted. No, no, no. Go ahead. I, was, oh, I had it off. Go ahead. I can hear you. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Well, go on. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Nice to meet you. All right. So, nice like I was too. telling everybody, uh, Tiffany is the co-owner of uh, Brazen Beauties. That's her current business. Um, if you're watching on Instagram, do remember you can get a better visual layout of the show on Twitch, Facebook, or YouTube. Uh, but we're going to try to organize the screen accordingly, uh, best for your view. Now, Tiffany, I've like I mentioned earlier, I've known her um, a good number of years. When I first known Tiffany, she was into modeling and event promotion. Um, she then got into singing um, and singing, I'm trying to make sure I'm not missing, modeling, singing, promoting, and and her current business, she has a company, co-company called Brazen Beauties, where they sell lots of accessories and hair products and a lot of female accessories and, and things like that. So Tiffany, I don't want to explain to them about your business. Introduce yourself and let them know about your business. So thanks, Wiggums, for having me and introducing me. Um, to correct you, it's been like 14, 15 years, but <laughs> who's counting? Anywho, um, I am a co-owner of Brazen Beauties. Um, pretty much it's me and my daughter, who's 21. She's in the next room doing her 21-year-old thing that she does. Um, but uh, how it came about was pretty much before the pandemic, um, we were... Well, she pretty much she wanted to like branch out and do lashing. So I was like, okay, like, because I know about promotions and at least being an entrepreneur, I'm like, I can pretty much help you with your vision. Just show me your vision. And so far it's been pretty good um, and stuff like that. Before I forget, I do want to touch base on what Brooklyn said earlier in regarding businesses being one-sided. I totally, 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 totally agree with her, um, especially within our community. So, I mean, eventually, hopefully you guys touch base back on that, but I 100%, like, she nailed it. That pretty much would be your root of everything of like, if, if people weren't so one-sided in our community or just small businesses, period, I think a lot of small businesses would succeed um, faster than how they do now. All right, no, it makes sense. Now, so either Brooklyn or, T either Brooklyn or Tiffany, um, when you guys say, because we might as well touch on it right now. When you guys okay. say, are, we're kind of one-sided. Um, can you guys, we'll start with Brooklyn. Can you kind of explain that when you say one-sided? Um, from personal experiences, um, I've went to a lot of dance halls. I've went to a lot of shows. I've bought a lot of um, merch from a lot of people. And um, like when I do my shows and stuff like that, I can't even count on one hand how much of those people come and support me. Half of my stuff are free. And people still don't support me. They don't repost my stuff. They don't, you know, they don't do any of that. But whenever they want me to like participate in something or they want me to, to do something, they're always sending stuff to me. And they know the type of person that I am that I love supporting. My, I've been uh, in the community from day one. So I've been supporting people from day one. It just didn't start yesterday when it's a trend for everybody to start supporting people. Because that's what I feel it is. It's a trend. That's to me. So, um, yeah, and and it's it's kind of it it's kind of it, it it puts me it puts me in a position where it's like I feel so down and I feel so down and out and I feel like you know when you look so out unmotivated. yeah when you when you look when you look out in the audience and you don't see not even one of your family members not one of your friends nobody there for you but yet when other people have events and stuff like that I'm gonna buy the forty dollar ticket or the thirty dollar ticket or if your or if your shirt costs fifty dollars Brooklyn's gonna e transfer that so I can get that shirt to so I can support you but I don't get the same with with people so that's what I mean when when I say that people are one sided like people will flood your DMs and everything. Oh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, help me, da 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 da, da. yo, share this, share this, this, that, second and third, and I'll do it, not a problem. But when it comes to my stuff, it's like half of the time, I don't even, 
ask, I, if you notice with me, some of the times with my friends or people that I support on days, I just randomly, I will randomly pick, pick them up in my stories. You don't even have to ask me. Okay. I just do that automatically, but people won't do that for me. So, so me, that's just so my take on that. Hold on. So let me ask some. Okay. So you're saying that you're putting, you're putting a certain energy out there. You're supporting people when it's your time. They're not supporting you. One thing I realized with being in business for several years and and being on being on both ends of business as a consumer and then you know the person delivering a service, I realized that people tap into the things they really want to tap into. You know what I'm saying? Like people go for what they really want to go for. So with that said, let's say you have something that you're doing and it's not really going in. And it's not really popping like that. Like your quality or your whatever, is, it, it's not really happening. And but you're still trying to force the. So do people still have to come because they're, you know, your fat or you supported them in the past? Or what if or can you give them a blight because it's your no. thing is really their thing? Can they support no. you from afar? No, can they because you no, wait, 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 okay. wait, so before you start, wait, hold on. Before I forget. Um. No, because at the end of the day, some of their stuff are my, not my thing. Some of your it's stuff, supportive. some of your dances, your dance halls, your shirts are not my type of style. But the type of person that I am, I will find a way to make it work. Like they say all the time, people make time for things that they want to make time for. It's that simple. You understand what I mean? I'm not saying every show or anything. Support is not always about you physically being there. When I mean support, I mean you can repost something that that takes 2.5 seconds. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Because yeah. half of the things oh, yeah. I don't rock with half of these these people's stuff. Like I don't, you know, but out of res out of respect and out of um and out of the love that I have for you, like at the end of the day, some of these things I won't rock, but I'm gonna purchase it because at the end of the day, I want to see you thrive and I want to see you do good. That's what it's about for me, but everybody's different. Yeah. So that's that what I'm saying. Sense. So Tiffany, um, in your closet, you probably have the price tag still on them because you were like, okay, I'm, I'm going to buy it. You know what I mean? And you still don't wear it. You know what I mean? It, it really has nothing to do with, do I rock it or not? If, if it's your family member and there, you see them trying to start their own business, you sharing it or liking it is way different. I'm not asking you to buy my product. But you could have just shared it. I shouldn't have strangers who I've never met before, you know what I mean, want to share my stuff or vice versa. And let's go back to Wiggums. Like I met you doing club stuff, you know what I mean? So yeah, I was that person. Look, go link Tiff. She has the, the link to get into whatever party. When parties are not going in anymore. And I just link them, like I post something. The least you can do, especially like if every Christmas you're sitting at my house drinking my wine from my wine glass, the most you can mm. do is share that. Just share it. Mm. I'm not asking you, I'm not asking, no, I'm not telling you to be a promoter on my stuff. I'm not telling you I'm going to, you're going to like, I'm going to employ you to promote. Like, no, it's just the whole support. You guys, um, people will have like those fake things going around like, Oh, share this and receive a free iPhone or whatever. Yeah, people will do that. And, and they'll share that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, the, actual, the actual, what you see majority of the time, oh, no, you know what? I can't come out because this is what I'm doing for my business. And they'll just sit down and watch. You know what I mean? Like, I've been doing this for a year. And majority, I'm going to say 85 to 90% of my um, customers are people I've never met. Never yeah. met. No. Tiffany, they keep coming back. Uh, you know what I mean. Now, and Tiffany, we were talking. Huh? We were talking. We were talking the other day, and you were telling me the same thing about about posting. Where, um, you 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 were posting something, posting something, and then not until somebody else posted it okay. did you start noticing other people, certain people posting it. So it's that same type of of support thing that 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 we were talking about the other day. Exactly. So let me let me ask you something, Tiff. Mm -hmm. All right. Two questions for you and Brooke. All right. First question is, you said 85 to 95% of the folks that support you, you've never kind of met them before, seen them before. 
what's their ethnicity? So what's their what's the makeup of the demographic? Like what's their race? Okay, like if you're so I love this. Yeah. I love this because we're talking about supporting black businesses. So yeah. um like today I had two customers who decided to do a pickup. And I let my daughter run downstairs and I was like, question, like, you know, what are they? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's like, oh, you know, um, I think Spanish or they're white. You know what I mean? And cool. Love it. Love it. Love it. Because again, I don't like the way my background is with promotion. I promote everywhere. There's not one place that I'm going to stick to promotion to only get black people because I mean, I do it too. I'm guilty of it. I'm human. You know what I mean? Like not saying every, but when it comes to like my friends and family, I definitely will share posts. Like, you know what I mean? So that's not going to break my fingers, but, um, I've used so many outlets that I don't know where these people come from. But it, as I said, majority of them, when I give them their package, um, are non-black people. You know what I mean? I can probably count on the, my two hands, how much black, like let's say one and a half of black people who have supported the business. And then even when they support it, it's like, you know, they want a trophy. Yeah. You it's like, hey, I bought, I bought your stuff. Let everybody know I bought your stuff that I supported you. Fact. Like, Looking That's for the recognition. I mean? And it's like, you can do that on your own. Do a snap and tag us. Like, you know what I mean? And again, like, disappointing because I've been doing this um, with my daughter for a year. We're doing amazing. But just not um, within my community, um, how like I've helped out my community. But again, like, do I, am I surprised? No, because I mean, as Wiggum said, I did music, same thing. You know what I mean? People want tickets to your shows. They want this, this and that. But it's like, can you guys repost my song? Or can you guys do this? You know what I mean? Or, oh, this DJ don't want to play it until this DJ plays it, then everybody will going to play it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's. That's like when you say one sided, I totally understand one hundred percent. So, so it, it sounds like a mentality piece, right? It sounds like a mentality piece, um, because if you and Brooklyn are talking about the same experience, I'm sure Jar Wiggs, um, I've had somewhat. I mean, things I do are a little different. It really just involves pretty much a black community. So, I mean, ninety nine percent of the people that um, participate in anything I got going on is usually black people um, or people of color. But so let's talk about the, the mentality or the mindset of folks. So because what we got to do is we got to talk about the route a little bit to see where we can go and how we could provoke a little bit of change and give people some strategies to support black businesses. So is there a mindset that people that we're cognizant of or people aren't aware of that that is that is um forcing these things to happen to the black businesses as far as low, low numbers coming to support what's happening. Okay. So one thing I can say is I know it happens everywhere or whatever, but when it comes to, I believe when it comes to our place, which is, which is Toronto, it's hard. It's really hard for people to black people to support blacks. Like in America, like, like I've said it all the time, like in America, it doesn't matter what it is. Your boy could be the shittest rapper out there. They're promoting their homeboy. They're promoting yeah. their homegirl. Somebody has a cooking thing. They're promoting that no matter what it is. Toronto, I feel like people feel like they have too much pride. And I feel like they feel when they get to a certain stature that they shouldn't be they shouldn't be doing this. People are now looking at people's numbers on Instagram to see if they if they should support. Oh, or if this and that, second and third. Like so, me, I to me, I just feel like it's a it's it's just a mentality of one of those things where it's just like, yo, bro, I if 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 I feel like my business is doing exceptional, then why should I help you? Like even though you were in the trenches at one point, you understand what I mean? To you know, some businesses do look at other businesses as competition so that could be a, a reason why they don't want to promote but nine out of ten times with me it's like in toronto it's, it's one of the hardest places for you to get support regardless of the situation and this is a, the most diverse city that i know but when it comes to the blacks it's like bro we rather kill each other than support each other that's the way i look at it like the numbers within killing each other is up like crazy but when it comes to the support it's like way old um under 30 percent period you you know one thing i want to say 
about that, it, it gets a little deep because the black community in Toronto, for the most part, is made up of Caribbean folks, West Indies folks, African and African, right? Like actually coming straight yeah, from yeah, Africa yeah. over here. Yeah. So we know the clashes among, cause we lived in the neighborhood. So there's clashing, I don't like you, this island, that small island people, we don't deal with them. Like there's, there's a lot of intergenerational, like the mindset, it was already a separative mindset from, from the jump, from people even migrated here. And I felt like, I feel like that sort of transcended into the, the neighborhoods and into, you know, the day-to-day -day walk of life. And when you, when you look at America, the majority of the blacks that came from there or are there came from the transatlantic slave trade, right? So they all kind of came one time and they have hundreds of years of this fight and this plight to, to push black, um, black empowerment and, 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 and coming together and the civil rights. And so they have these, this, this rich history of this movement and this togetherness that, that translates into other walks of life that we don't have out here. And that's, that, that there's, there's other pieces, but that's a big part of it. How do you guys feel about that? I definitely agree with what you're saying where you say it kind of goes deeper. Um, and I kind of agree with that because even from when I'm listening to what you guys are saying, right? I'm hearing I'm hearing issues on the on the on the customer side in terms of how they deal with the business, and I'm hearing complaints on the business side on how the customer service said on how they respond to people. So if if I'm hearing issues on both sides from the top and the bottom, then it's definitely is is it like you said, is it something deeper within our people and and as soon as you mentioned that jada it kind of it kind of touched on a video that we were looking at the other day and i think we should just play that clip um and then we'll continue the conversation right you're on mute wigs you're on mute so first of all i just want to shout out breakfast club and dr umar uh where we got that clip from uh, we found it was interesting and flowed with today's topic. So again, shout out to Breakfast Club and Dr. Umar for uh, for that clip there. Um, so Jada kind of falls into what you were saying about mentality. So what he said was, he said, and again, on both ends, black people are not used to it. We're just not used to supporting each other because of that slave mentality that we're used to, to, to being in. So what, what's you guys take on that clip? Jada, you can punch in and we'll go to oh yeah, okay. Brooklyn, you go ahead. No, I just feel like we just need to stop making excuses for ourselves. Period. Regardless of the situation, what it is, we need to we need to take all of that, what we what we know, our knowledge and things of that nature, and we need to apply that with what what we learned from back then till now. We can't continue with with these things as we we never had, we we never knew. We know now. There's we a difference. Now. We didn't exactly. know back then. We didn't know back then. We know now and we no, should know no. better now. So at the end of the day, I just feel like we're always making up excuses for ourselves as black people as into why we act the way that we act. We act like this because we want to. And we act like this because half of the time we don't like to see each of each um each of um each of us thrive for greatness. There's a lot of people that will cheer you on, but then in the background is hating on you low key. And half and ha and nine out of 10 times is people in your own circle that brings you down and stuff like that. So to me, it's like, let's just stop making excuses. Yes, everything that he says was correct, but we need to stop making excuses, apply what he says and, and put it together with what we know now and just come together, period. That's That's what I have to say on that. All right, Tiffany, what do you have to say about that clip? I, uh, you I either agree, still, disagree, I anything to add? I agree with Brooklyn right now because until we hold ourselves accountable, like, as she said, we know better. It's not like we're still living back in the day and that's what we're being taught. You know what I mean? We're, we just hold yourself accountable. Like, literally when you were playing that clip, um, before the show started, I had posted that I'm on an online interview, okay? So... You show the clip, my phone goes off, and the girl, black girl, oh, don't tell me you're leaving your store. Store as in my retail store that I work at. You know, I'll hook up my one, two friends that 
know me. I work at a certain location of a store and I'll give them a 50% off. When the lockdown started, everyone knows I have my, my side business. I'm at work handing out business cards. You know what I mean? But the minute they hear we're going under a lockdown, it's not, oh, Tiff, do you think I can get some of your product or some business cards or whatever? It's, do you still have that link 50% off at the big retailer store? You know what I mean? That already is making billions of dollars. And it's like, like what the hell? So she just messaged me to ask me that while I'm watching what you guys are playing. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it, it's annoying. <laughs> The stars always align where they're supposed to align. Sister, mm -hmm. I know you my sister. Can I not get a discount? Like, no. Like, maybe people do. Maybe people do do this when they go to whoever's store and they might, may, may, you know, try to, oh, can I get a discount? Maybe it will work for them. Maybe it won't. But you know what? When I'm also asking you, well, do you think you can pay online because it tracks my inventory? And then you're telling you're me, well, I don't want to pay online because I don't want to pay tax. We can live in Canada, guys. We live in Canada. You're going to go tell Walmart you don't want to pay tax? You're not. Exactly. So like, they're you know, going to be like, that, and that's what, they're going to tell you to put the product right back on the show. And that's what I always say. You guys cannot go to um, Halt's or Balenciaga or Gucci or any of these high ends and go to the front counter and say, hey, can I get 50% off this? Can I get this for 80% off? Matter of fact, even though it's 1500, can you give it to me for 750? You can't do that. And on top of that, when you guys are buying it online, you guys are paying the shipping and handling for those name brands. So me who lives probably 20 minutes away from you and I'm selling a shirt or I'm selling lashes or something for $15, you you don't even wanna come that far. You want me to deliver, you want me to do all these type of things, but if it was for a name brand, you're gonna pay that though. I don't, I don't understand it. You can't ask for discounts from those guys who are worth millions and billions of dollars, but your friend who just started their business, Wadeya, you want to come and ask me for 50% off or even, oh, so I can't get that shirt for free, dog? Like, I swear, I'll, I'll tag you on Instagram. You end up yeah. giving it to them and they don't tag you. They don't, tag they don't you. do nothing. <laughs> they don't They don't give you your, your they don't do anything. So at the end of the day, what is what is the purpose of that? Like, so they, I swear to God, they, they let you a dream. So let me let me tap in here, Wiggs. Or did you want to speak on that piece? Um. Well, if you want, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yo, you said it to her, no? Ladies, you know a problem, you know. <laughs> I love it. She needs to be on here more. <laughs> so, so here's so here's what. No, no. We this is viewpoints. This is what it is. We you throw you throw your views out there. You get the mind going. You know what I mean. You get conversation started. So yo, here's what I'm saying. What Dr. Umar Johnson was saying about us not having the history of building institutions. He went on to talk about the four main institutions that you need in a society, right? To build a sustainable society. Um, the hospital, the bank, um, the, 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 the grocery store, and I can't remember what the other one was. Did I say school? Did I say school system, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, and education, education finance, health, yeah. and food. Exactly, exactly. So we have we have pockets of that as far as us doing that in different moments in history, right? And there's people that are replicating it now in a smaller degree, but for the larger part of our community and who we are, we don't we we're not we're not brought up in that way to build a hospital, to build a supermarket. To, so what he's talking about is if we understood that process. Because you see, starting anything from the ground, from the ground, you're gonna have a lot of turnover. You're gonna have staff that don't work out. You're gonna have, it's just gonna go until you figure out the, until you figure it out, right? So that P, you see, if we understood that, if we understood the journey and understood what it took, here's what I believe he's saying, that we would have a little more empathy and could see a little more with a black business that may have, you know, some staff, they're starting out in their early years, or they may have some staff that aren't doing what they should do and need to get removed. There's a way to address that as well, talking to the manager. And how many of you guys really talk to a man? When you go, let's talk about the restaurant business because I know, I feel like everybody- Okay, hold about, on. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Go Before ahead. you get to the restaurant business, because yeah. that kind of segues into to one of the questions from the viewers. Go because ahead, throw them Because from the beginning of the show, 
you you mentioned that one of your key things was let me see let me see what it was effective and effective no he didn't listen effective and efficient customer service quote for quote is what jada man said right so mm -hmm. super cool for 1983 wants to know what does effective and efficient customer service look like so jada man i want i want you to answer as a customer right what does that look like to you and then i want to and then i want to ask tiffany as a business owner what does efficient what does effective and efficient customer service mean to you and then brooklyn again as a customer i want you to reply to tiffany and you know what your take on that and as a customer if you've been receiving that as well so jada man again what does effective and efficient customer service look like okay so efficient customer service is adequate the right amount of customer service that i need okay first and foremost that's the efficient part it has to be fit has to be enough the right amount that i need for whatever situation i'm in whether i'm bringing back something whether i just ordering something and i'm having a jolly day the right serve the right amount of customer service okay effective customer service now it needs to be the communication needs to be on point all right so the communication needs to be on point you need a um you need to be able to speak to and and answer some of the questions that i have in regards to you know what's going on with your service and what you have on the board and that sort of thing all right and if you can't um and and emerge in the two and if you don't have the answers you you have a way to effectively go and source it right so go and find the answer and come back and and still make me feel like you know i want to be in that being being um your 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 presence so whether i'm in the store whether i'm online whatever it is right so that's in a nutshell that's how i feel effective and efficient the right amount for to, to deal with whatever i'm dealing with customer services in a nutshell all right so tiffany respond to that honestly what he said is right on like if i go into a store as a customer i don't want to be over bombarded with fake customer service it, it has to flow you know what i mean and as you said things have to match up um one thing with me that i like to let everybody know is every job that i've worked for for not myself every three months every to six months i'm like employee of the month for effective customer service you know what i mean so um what i try to do with my personal business is when i have a customer let's say it's a question i always like to follow up with them that's number one if they do purchase a product i always still like to follow up with them it's not a harassment of post my stuff or you know what i mean like how did you like the product Number one, I'm a new business. So me getting that feedback, I feel will kind of help me in the long run. So I would always like want to touch base with them. Um, but yeah, like everything Jada said, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the same. I would have to say effective customer service. I, I like the, I like the customers when it comes to customer service, I used to work at a department where it's just like, just like you doling, I was employee of the month, yes. Um, but it was one of those things where I always felt like I put myself in their, in their shoes. Sometimes people are having bad days, I get it. Not everybody's gonna come to work jolly, happy, whatever the case may be. I try to make it very easy for, for the person, especially if I see on your face that you're not having a good day or probably the previous customer pissed you off and stuff like that and I get the back end of it. So um, my thing is, is asking questions. If you're, if you're not sure about, about something, I don't mind you going over to your management and asking them, I'd rather you bring somebody over that may have a bit more knowledge. There's, it's not disrespect to you at all, but I just feel like, you when you try to answer questions that you're not that's when people start losing you know what i mean you start losing people because then it's like yo bro do you not know your job or not that's when people right. start to get angry so i rather right. i rather somebody tell me you know what ma'am can you just hold on in a second while i grab so and so that's not a problem because right there that's showing me okay you're not really knowledgeable as into what i'm saying right now but you're actually willing but to take willing that to. step to help you that you're willing All to right. take that step to bring somebody else you get what i mean so and just 
customers like to me it's just like just greet you know just just greet with a smile and and stuff like that and just be polite like like i said everyone's gonna have their off days you're gonna have customers that are assholes you're gonna have people you know maybe you and your husband never i don't know what it was and stuff like that but just know what you're talking about and the attitude cut that and like i said if you need help just ask for it and i wouldn't mind standing there for two for two seconds while you go grab somebody that may know what's going on but don't give out false information because that's something that i hate and not following up that's another thing a lot of people don't do that they don't follow up they don't do any of that so all that's right what I would say. In, term, in, in, in relation to what you said in terms of um them not knowing providing you false information um super super cooper also mentioned that they believe that the lack of efficiency and effectiveness stems from lack of good organizational leadership so what's your guys take on that because it does kind of fall in line to what you said so is is part no. of the problem that some of these owners and managers are not properly training some of these employees on how to respond in situations it's, it's in in most situ in most situations that's not what it is because you get everyone gets trade um trained the same way um, um to me personally when it when you're on the other side you're not the customer and you're the person that's helping the customer i believe that if you love if you love what you do or you like what you do you're gonna make sure you're the best at it, at it. so if you wake up every morning and you hate your job you're gonna come to work with that same energy i hate my, my job but you tell those people that are chippy happy and stuff like that don't take um take training extra training and stuff like that and ask questions and stuff like that so it's it's more on the leader that can have, have great leadership quality qualities but it's how you how you take it and how you um people learn differently right so i i i my personality and jada man's personality is totally different from yours and you understand what i mean so not everybody's the same and there, some people um taking information differently so you can have a great leader but at the end of the day like you know what i mean if, if that person doesn't care about their job as much as i do when i'm training you what what am i supposed to do about that it has nothing to do with me i'm giving you the information but like i said if you don't wake up saying i i like to go to work you're gonna bring that energy every day that you that you go to work because you don't want to be there so you're you're gonna you're you're gonna give that i don't care attitude just like that no now, Jada, 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 before you tap in, mm -hmm. um, one of the viewers agreed with where Brooklyn said she says uh, when she and she works at a retail store. Sandra says that when she walks in, she sets the tone, she emulates her smile and greeting, even if she's having a bad day. Because to a customer, if your face is sour, the food may be sour as well. <laughs> so, Jada, <go> ahead. <laughs> Yo, big up pie. Been raised the man in the building. Um, all right. So I'm gonna speak to me getting older and realizing things, and having uh, with getting older, getting wiser, and having a little more comprehension and understanding for things, and going through different trainings myself, and you know, being enriched with history and stuff like that, and knowing. Okay, so I got all of this information and knowledge now. Now I can understand more of the context of where some of these employees are coming from, right? So me me being a man of the people and being in the community and doing the stuff that I do in the community for years and years and years, I'm I'm, I'm able to really, it's, it's one thing to grow up in it and live it, but and then it's another thing to be on the other side where you're coming back in the neighborhood and you're supporting and you, you know, you got the skill set and you got, you know, you're coming in with, some supports and resources and you're and you're really hearing what's seeing and hearing what's going on from a different from a different view and what I, and where, where i'm wrapping that into is cultural competency cultural competency so the 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 black girl i'm just gonna say black girl but the black girl at the restaurant in a black neighborhood and a white girl in a whiteness uh, restaurant in a white neighborhood have two completely different lived experiences and are, are, are potentially dealing with two different um um lived experiences right so as far as where the neighborhoods they're coming from neighbor so neighborhoods are coming from resources they have and don't have 
what's potentially happening with their spouses, that sort of thing, family members. Like we have to, in, in the grand scheme of everything, we have to consider where our people are coming, where we're at and where we're coming from. Yes, some people are making it. Yes, there's some strides, but for the majority, we're coming from a similar place culturally and as a socioeconomic class. So it's knowing those things, I have a little more patience. I have a little more patience. I understand a little more. You get what I'm saying? I remember one, I remember at one point I had um, somebody that I knew that just came out from the inside. He's older and I'm trying to get him, I'm trying to get him um, tapped in to go work, right? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go where I'm going to go. I'm going to go. And he's just passing up all these, um, all these jobs. Uh, so the interviews were coming and he wasn't going, he wasn't going. The person's mother was calling me saying, yo, he's not going to talk to him, talk to him. Long story short, I didn't know what was going on with this guy. And then I seen an elder that I know that helped raise us. I'm talking to me and my siblings. And he said, I was telling him about it. He goes, listen, you ever think that he's scared? And I said, what do you mean scared? He's a big dotty man. You know what kind of stuff he used to do? He does in the streets. And what? He goes, no, you ever think he's, this thing terrifies him. Sitting in front of somebody, being vulnerable and having to interview and and then I, I sat and I was like, hold on, it is a terrifying, especially if you're doing it for the first time in your thirties or whatever. I can't imagine what that would feel like. You know what I'm saying? So we have to consider these pieces too. Not to say we excuse it, but we have to consider it. And when we're doing our training and when we're showing love to our community, we have to do it in a, a more compassionate and loving way. But yes, we have to have zero tolerance for other things too. So there's a, there's a thin line to walk, but we gotta, we gotta put it together because our thing is a little different from, from the others. All Let's right, keep Tiffany, it a book uh, before you go on. Hold on. Let's keep it a book. Let's keep it a book when, when we're talking. I feel at the end of the day, some people are just horrible when it comes to customer service, no matter how much you train them or whatever. There's some people that are built like that. And then there's some people that no matter how much you try, they're just they're, when it comes to communication, when it comes to customers, they're just horrible at it. And nine out of 10 times, those are head honchos and they're the ones that, you know, tell other people what to do because they're unable to deal with, with, with customers like that. That's why we have managers, the system managers, all these types of stuff, because there's certain, you know, sometimes the manager will pass it off to the assistant manager to handle the situation because, Hey, I may not be great as a manager with customer service, but you know, the assistant manager may be. So some people are just horrible with it, no matter how much you, you try with them. So. All right. So I don't know. So I have a, we have a question from uh well a comment right from one of the viewers uh so big up scoops 83 on the ig um tiffany quick question right yeah um a mcdonald's in jane and finch and a mcdonald's <laughs> in richmond hill you get you get two different experiences is mm -hmm. there a reason why or or why why would that be oh my gosh oh my gosh um well why i don't know why but like it all i guess has, i guess that's the big question the one, right what they what they both said um still goes back to which i'm gonna agree with jada but i'm also gonna agree with my girl here okay because it does yeah. has, number one <laughs> it number one again i always in every interview or i tell my kids like if you do not wake up and you say i i love doing what i do to go and do what you need to do, you're, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. So I agree with that. Um, but also with it being like, okay, not all managers are going to train people the same way. Like, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, as, okay, Brooklyn, you said people should be trained the same way, but me being a supervisor and an assistant manager in my years, I sit down and I watched like right now, my manager, love him to death. Maybe I love him to death because he's so laid back and doesn't care. Um, but I'm the oldest in my work. So I can look at these young ones and be like, that is definitely wrong. You know what I mean? So like, like you can't talk to the customer like that. And it's like, well, they shouldn't da, 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 da. But the manager don't care. And I'm just their supervisor. You know what I mean? So I can only document that. I, I can't really do anything other than either de-escalate a situation if a situation came up due to the fact that this girl is talking to a customer a wrong way because her manager didn't train her. You know what I mean? So me being in Richmond Hill or in Jane and Finch, I might get the best customer service at a Jane and Finch, 
because those are my people. You know what That's I mean? True. And I might then turn around and go to Richmond Hill and they're looking at me some type of way because my skin tone's different. You know what I mean? So it, it, to me, it, like that question, I, like I, I don't know if I answered it properly, but it to me depends on who's working and how they got trained. Jane All right, Finch, that makes sense. I used to live in Jane and Finch, right in the lane. Um, shout out to bottom, bottom Jeffwood, um, the lane. Um, and when it comes to, I'm telling you guys, hand down the 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 customer service at Jane and Finch has been known to be one of the worst customer service in in the GTA. Um, so the and that's from my personal experiences. <laughs> And I'm saying from my personal experiences and both like going through the drive through, even going inside, um, not knocking anybody that worked at Jane and Finch McDonald's because I had a lot of bridges that worked in and I knew a couple of the managers and stuff like that. But some of the attitudes of the managers and the the um, the general managers and stuff like that, you kind of like how they how they hire their staff. I feel like you can't. And Finch McDonald's, if you don't have a, a stern backbone, because the people that come through the drive through are a handful. I, I could say that. So the people, I, I feel like when they're interviewing people at, for Jane and Finch is like the way that they do it is like, yo, you have to have a little bit of spice with you because the energy that comes through there sometimes is, is crazy. But All right, I don't cool. like. See, I've never, I've yeah. never been to the mcdonald's at jane and drift or wherever like and that's the show like i've never i think i've been there probably once if that's the one off of beverly hills drive back in the day we still do parties down there but that no no that's a different one that went further down no 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 no, no. that's a different one i've never i've never been this one's attached to jane and finch mall okay so again i've never even been to jane and finch mall. all right no worries okay so, okay, so jada no so jada let me get your take on something because from what i'm hearing right again i'm hearing issues at different level if we're talking about a predominantly black owned business or a franchise business in a black neighborhood where predominantly black people work there i'm hearing issues where is is it is it that they're not being trained properly is it that the people that are majority working there are the ones that don't care or is it that this whole environment that they've been grown up in is what's causing that overall issue yeah yeah so as i said cultural competency that's it when you're talking about the difference dr umar johnson was talking about it people being used to building institutions in richmond hill I'm sure they probably, I can't say for sure, but I'm, I'm sure they, whoever runs those those pieces over there are probably used to building certain institutions, right? Because we know of the, you know, the predominant race that lives or that, or that resides in that area. Jane and Finch, we know what, we know what it's about over there. We know majority it's low income. We know, we know some of the issues that have the systemic racism. We know the violent, we know all of those pieces, right? And those things, are accompanied with usually with a culture and, and a certain way of doing things. So yes, as Brooklyn said, to be the hiring staff, you have to spice. Yeah, yeah you have to have on all your rap on. Yeah, but, yeah. Okay, on. Let, me ask a let me let me jump in. Let me jump in. Yeah. So, so just like how you're you're saying it and saying it joyfully with energy, right? Yeah. And when Brooklyn was talking about it, she called it spice, right? Yeah. But isn't it this same spice that that we're also complaining about? And it, yeah, so it's a thin line between spice and something with bonio, right? So, <laughs> on the, so on the next side of the spice is yeah, a fire, right? It's it's fire. So that's just what it is. Yeah, that it could turn the the other way, like when it when it doesn't go the way. You know, people want it to go. But yes, I think you got to, as a business owner, you got to understand your demographic. So you got to understand where you're putting your business, who the people are, um, what your clientele is going to be, and what you need to manage and, and, and keep things flowing in that environment. And that's what it is. That's All what right, it so, is. So in, in that, in relation to what you said, right, you said you got to take a look at your environment, your cultural, who you're trying to reach, right? Um Again, what about what about in this in this world we are now in today? Everything's all about social media, online platform. 
So a lot of times when you're promoting and selling or clients are reaching out to you, you don't even know the race of that person. So nowadays you have to kind of go in on a more generic basis. So Tiffany, um, you mentioned that a lot of your clients are, are non-black or, or from other cultures. Do you notice um, in your emails, DMs and things like that, are you seeing or noticing cultural differences in how your you, customers are interacting with you? Um, interacting with me, no. But at the same time, it's like, um, for me, where I was struggling was when I first started, I was like, okay, you know, we, we started off doing eyelash technician. Eyelash technician then had to come to a pause due to the the COVID stuff. So then we're like, let's use that and start doing eyelash strips. Not everybody wears eyelash strips. Um, and then I was like, okay, let's start branching off into other things, um, which went into Black History Month where I started doing little stickers that were like um, black girls empowerment. You know what I mean? Like all about melanin. So I had to ask my friend who is white um, well, she's white, but her, her, she's half Guyanese, half white. And I asked her, if you were a white person who is receiving this, how would you take it? You know what I mean? So now I'm like trying to like put myself in a situation like, do I need to change what I'm doing and only give this to black people? Like it, it's, it's kind of messed up. You know what I mean? So what I do now is basically when I get an order, I will just look at the last name and go off of that based off of me kind of not knowing who they are. You know what I mean? So more, it's more me looking at the last name to see who they are, what last name they have. All right. Now, Brooklyn, same thing with you. When you're, when you're purchasing online, whether it's mm -hmm. from a black business or, or a non-black based business, are you, are your interactions with them any different because of the type of business that they are? Um, to be honest with you, um, whenever, whenever I'm ordering something or if I'm like, if I see something on Instagram on somebody's page that they're selling something or they're doing something and I want to thing, my thing is, is I put out the energy that I want to receive. So when I go, I DM people and I'll be like, Hey, what's good? My name is Brooklyn. I seen whatever, whatever on your site. And you know, I'm really interested. Can you give me more details? Blah, blah, blah. So the energy that I bring kind of forces them to bring that same energy back. So I kind of set the tone when it comes to stuff like that. Um, if I, I don't care if you're black, white, orange, whatever color you are. I just, if I see something and I like it and I feel like, you know, I want to get it, I'm going to get it. But, you know, sometimes when it comes to, when it comes to people um, answering back, I'm not going to lie to you. My, 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 my black brothers and sisters be taking a little bit longer than my Caucasian people and <laughs> the Asians and stuff like that. Like, you feel me? Like people will look at, it will say seen, meaning you read what I, what I sent to you, but sh you know, you have time to repost stuff on your page, but you know, I'm talking to you about business and you don't get back to me until two days later, two, three days later, or when you feel you should. And then when you do, you give me attitude. So it's one of those things where, like I said, I put out the energy that I want to receive back. That's what I do. All right. Well, that, well, that. Thank you for mentioning that as well, because um, it kind of ties into one of the question, one of the comments from uh, one of the viewers. Shout out to Pai Shah tuning in on the YouTube. Uh, they mentioned time management is also very important in business as well. Um, you don't want to wait thirty minutes at one location if you could go somewhere else and get it in five minutes. So, five at what point minutes. does at what? And I'm asking. All three of you will go Jada Man, then Tiffany, and then Brooklyn. At what point does support become a hassle? Meaning like you, you want to support the business, you're reaching out to support the business, and either they're taking way, way longer than one expects they should, or, or the cost is way higher than it should. You know, at what point does support become a hassle or you know, what's your limit, Jada? Yeah, this one, this one's, this one's tough. <laughs> but um, 
Let's go with pricing. Cause if people know me, me love a deal. Me tell them last <laughs> week, me love it. Love my deal, them. Team, don't play with my deal. So I love it. Okay? So I will. I could come and so if you're like, if your markup is like crazy, I may support it. What <laughs> somebody can't be pants tight. <laughs> Oh, hold on. <laughs> Yo, so if if no, that's my girl Melissa. That's my girl Mel. So if I um if I'm coming and your markup is like crazy, I may support it the one time, but it, it it's not good. I can't breathe after that. You get what I'm saying? So what I'm saying, you you have to you have to consider your competition. You have to, because if I'm out in the world, if that's the only thing and that's the only price, like when you're buying Jordans, wait, um, not wigs, Brooklyn, are you, you're a shoe <laughs> fanatic. He's a shoe <laughs> fanatic. When you're buying the latest shoe and it's one of one or, or it's limited, it, it, it there's no competition. So the price is the price. But when there's competition yeah. and, and you know, you're bleeding, like somebody's bleeding you, it'll make me say, you know what? I can't really, I can't really do it. You know, but I'm a that's, person. That's a I'm a I'm a person. I like to give people insight as well too, and that takes not everybody is feels comfortable enough to just talk to somebody and say, "Yo, your price seems too high." Oh, or whatever, so you'll, so you'll kind of let them know. That's what I was gonna I ask. Let them know. I said, "Listen, man, you gotta you gotta kind of adjust it because down the street, boom, 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 and maybe they weren't privy to that information. Maybe they didn't do all their homework, and that's just one piece. There's a lot of pieces, but I'll just drop that one, and you could." We we'll go to the other okay, So, so yeah. Tiffany, same question. In your experience or or a random general question, at what at what point does support become too much or just just a hassle now? Um I would have and, to and again, it could be pricing, it time, be customer pricing. service, pick one. It would have to number one be the pricing. Um and then number two, um, like Brooklyn said, the energy I come in. If I come into your shop and you know, I don't even get a greeting. And it's like, okay, well, this is what I want. I came in and I know I want it. Sometimes, depending on what it is, if I know I want it and, like, I need it, like, I'm going to just grab it and go. I really don't really care about their customer service. But if it's somewhere where I'm passing through and I see, okay, you know what, let's go in. And that's the energy that I'm getting. Like, there's just no customer service. And I ask you a question and I get that response. Like, I am bothering you. Like, I'm out. I'm out. Peace. I'm out. All right. So Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn, same question. Um, at what point at what point does support become too much? Is it is it price? Is it customer service? Is it timing? What's most important? What's gonna make you say this is too much? I would have to say the customer service, because custom before you even get into pricing or anything like that, I'm going off you how you greet me. Period. Like you could, I, I could tell if you're going to be cocky, if you're one of those cocky people, if you know, you can't be bothered. Like I, I, I look at the way you, so I would have to say customer service because that's, if your customer service is not a one, that's going to turn me off right there. And I'm not going to want to buy nothing from you or refer anybody to you. Because yeah. if I have to deal with that negativity, if I have to deal with that negativity, I'm definitely not going to send my, my family members or any of my close friends that I respect Unless I don't respect you, then I'll send them over that way. But other than that, why would I, if you're giving me shitty customer service and you're not answering me in a timely manner, why would I want to send anybody else to you? And that's where a lot of people lose a lot of people because as they said, first impressions goes a long way. So if you're taking two days to respond to me, but I see you reposting on Instagram, I am no longer going to ask you about your business, period, point blank, period. So customer service for me. All right. Well, that kind of that kind of makes sense. Let me add to that. You see, the other thing is because we mentioned pricing and customer service. You see, if I get a bang for my buck, and it's so you you have to find value in the service itself. Customer service is the way you deliver it. Pricing is the way you price it. But the service delivery itself, you get what I'm saying. So if I have if you get if it costs a hundred dollars and it's eighty or seventy five down the road, but Yo, when I come in, you put up my foot, you clip my toenail, like everything oh I want. <laughs> All right. it, like I'm not for, leaving it. You get what no, I'm for, A lot of these people, they be like, like the other day, sorry, like the other day, um, 
uh, a kick, um, a pair of kicks came out and obviously all the stores are closed. So I was unable to get it, but there's guys that are online that can get it for whatever. So I hit somebody up. I wear size four and a half, five. Okay. I know I pay children's prices about 165 in the store plus taxes, 180, whatever. I'm not paying no more than two bills for my shoes. If you're a guy try to charge me for a size four and a half, five, he tried to charge me $350 to four bills. What are you doing? I turned to him and I said, listen, darling, I don't need the shoes that much. And what happened? I end up getting it for an, for the actual price, which it was. And that guy was just trying to make money off of me. So to me, it's like, that's how you lose customers. Because if you're charging me the big people them size, what is the purpose of me coming to you? Might as well. I just, I just go into the stores and buy a man size. Like, what am I doing with that? Mm-hmm. All right. So, so. It makes sense what you guys are saying, right? So, again, in relation to the topic, what do black businesses need to do to gain your support? Um, we, we've talked about pricing. We've talked about customer service. We've talked about timing as well. Um, one of the one of the one of the comments that was posted on the Instagram was they need to provide better quality. So I haven't heard that that brought up as well. So I want to know what you guys take on that. And not to say, like, why, what can they do to provide better quality? Because there's many businesses of all colors that, that provide poor quality. And there's businesses of all, col- of all colors that provide great quality. Now, what happens when you have a friend with a business um, you know they do your business. They know you that that you know, and and everybody's aware of the situation. You've supported them. However, the quality of what they're providing is not up to par or satisfactory to what somebody else is providing. Um, at that point, do you let them know, um, or how do you deal yeah. with that situation? <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, we'll start with Brooklyn. We'll hit back to you. Then we'll go Jada. Then Tiffany. Yeah, for a fact, you let them know, not in a disrespectful way, but especially if it's a friend and somebody you consider to be a friend and somebody that you want to see um, thrive and, and do and be be better. And you know, they can be better. You know what I mean? You let them know, like not in a dis, like I said, not in a disrespectful, hurtful way, but you let them know, yo, you know, I can bring you or try to refer them. What I try to do is try to refer them to other resources that will be able to help them and probably get like as... Um, it said, like, you know, you know, you get something for a good, a good price. Like I can hook you up with somebody you're doing t-shirts. Well, I know somebody who's also doing t-shirts and, you know, make them communicate where, you know, maybe he can help you out with his vendor because his quality shirt is amazing and he can probably give you a bang for your buck. So why not? But just don't be disrespectful with it or make it seem like you're trying to like play them or, or, or anything like that. So just letting them know. All right, I like that. Let them know, and you said let them know in a non non disrespectful way. Um, Jada, yeah. what's your opinion on that? In your in that situation, I, um, I felt like I kind of I alluded to it a little bit when I said, you know, if the quality is good, like the the package, you could charge whatever. But I know you want to get more specific. So specifics with quality, as I said, um, it's competition. It, it's competition. So you have to see what the what the go to people are doing. And try to and try to and try to elevate um, your production to that level. If you can't because you don't have the resources or whatever, and you know, say you're mid level, say you got the top and you're mid level, then you know you got to price accordingly. You gotta, you know, you know who your demographics are. You know who can afford your stuff. You cater to them, and then you know you build until you could get to that, to that, you know, that that ultimate level, and 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 in, and change your fan base. So, for example. If somebody's doing video production, right, and, and post production stuff and editing, so what I mean is, they're shooting videos and they're editing to go online. Well, look, hold certain, on. Let, yeah. let me jump in and let me jump in on that okay. aspect, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm a video producer. I've been doing this for for five years. Me specifically, Wiggums, right? I I did your first video. Like I, I I'm gonna do your first video. Boom, boom, boom. And you're happy with it, right? On your second video, you went. You went and got somebody else to do it. Your third video, you went and got somebody else to do it. Now it's time for your fourth video, and I'm saying, "Yo, Jada man, I know you you go to different people, but yo, I'm ready for that fourth video now. I'm ready for that fourth video." W- what are you saying to me? 
So it all depends. So if I never if I never rallied back, if it's my fourth one and I never rally back, that means I'm not re I wasn't really feeling your production. Right? So no, I, I, I figure that, but how how are you like when I say to you, all right, Jada man, that fifth video, you're ready to go here. I know you're lined up ready to do it next so, week. So in what I'm gonna do like I already have somebody else in mind. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, show me what you've done lately. Uh, lately. So basically in any industry, it's a, sh what have you done for me lately? That's what it is in any industry. Okay, yeah. you do music, what have you done lately? Yeah, you used to be tough 10 years ago, but yeah, right now we don't know what you can do. You do videos, let's see what you, you know what I'm saying? So that, what have you done for me lately? So you have to be, you always have to be on your craft. You always have to be building your business and, and, and coming up with the, with, with innovation and being creative and innovative. So that's a key. Because when somebody it. asks at the drop of a dime, you're able to produce something that's top level. Yeah, I like that. And, and that kind of, again, it goes with the quality. So yeah, you might you might have done you might have done a video last week, but I'm doing a video next week and I want to know what you did yesterday. So like you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, continue. Yeah, no, no. So I was just, just uh, kind of agreeing with what he said. Uh, Brooklyn, before oh. you punch in, though, I just want to get Tiffany's answer to that question. Um, same thing. So um, you're in a situation where, um, you know, did I ask you just now? Did you answer already? No, no oh, okay. she didn't. Oh. Yeah, so same same question. So you're in a situation where the, the product is not as, as you need it to be. How do you deal with it? How do you let that person know? Um, okay. So this is going off of if they're my people or if they're not my people. Um, well, yeah, somebody, somebody, you know, your friend provides a service. Um, definitely, um, if they're my friend, I'm, I'm, I should be able to let you know about your product, like vice versa. Um, if I have a product that's out there and my friends think that it's not up to par, I hope they would have enough decency to come and let me know their opinion. Um, but I always take into consideration when I'm getting my product, um, Obviously, from what you see when you're online looking at your product to then purchase it, um, when you then receive your product, my first question always is, would I rock this? You know what I mean? Would I want to pay this amount of money for this product? And then I always bring my kids in because, you know, they're of age to be like, okay, guys, what's your opinion on this? And I always base my pricing off of my like what I'm looking at and what they're telling me. And then, as I said, um, I would just have to like just to know the respect that somebody would be like, Tiff, like those were whack, like nah. Oh, and and I, I like that answer as well. So based on kind of what kind of kind of plays along again with being, you have the you should have the be able to have that respect and decency with that person to be able to let them know that hey, the you know your quality or your price or your time might need to get. You know, adjusted. So just like in um, any other store, you would go to any other store. You don't like their product. The, you know what I mean? Like you have your Karens who are like, "Ah, oh, this is I don't like this," and I paid my money for this and blah blah blah. Like it's all about you know how that how you as a customer receive it to that owner of the business or how that owner of the business receives it to that customer. It's still based off of number one customer service. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so so that that definitely that definitely works. Now, one more one more thing that one more comment that we had from one of the hold viewers. On, hold on. Before, before you go with with the Jada Man situation, just a while ago when he was saying that um, about you know if Homeboy did his video, if you did his video and he didn't like it and he went somewhere else, um, I would say in that regard, not everybody's good at music videos. Maybe he's good at. I will. I would utilize you for something else. Maybe you're good for um, visuals. Maybe you're good for photography. Maybe you, uh, you know what I mean. Because there's some things that people are better at than um, there's there's a list of things that they may be better at. Music videos is is probably something that they just got into, but they've been doing pictures and web design and things of that nature. So to me, I would just try to find your strengths as a friend and say, you know what. Maybe the music video thing is not your thing, but guess what? You're sick at the photos. So going forward, I'm, when I'm when I'm pulling up to a photo shoot, I'm bringing you as a photographer 
to, to help me with that. When it comes to visuals, like, you know, when my album comes out, I see that you're great with the graphic design. I'm going to need you to put something together for me and stuff like that. So at the same time, it's letting them know, you know what, at the end of the day, you're great with the camera. You're excellent with, with the camera. You're excellent with all of that. But music video will not be your lane at this time. Until you develop a little bit more, what I'm going to utilize you for is probably web design or, like I said, photography or things of that nature. So that's something I would do. All right. And I, and I definitely kind of agree with that as well. And I love that because, again, you're not only, you're not only letting them know the issue but you're you're not just saying all right you're not good at videography i'm going somewhere else you're taking the time as a friend and as a person who's trying to support a black business you're taking the time to investigate and say hey you know what video may not be your thing but i already know you're you dj great and you're a great photographer so i already got the video guys sorted out but i still want you on my team and i still want to support your business so I kind of I love that answer that you gave because it kind of rounds everything out. It you know you're you're giving your opinion and you're offering solutions as well. So I want to actually. So I want to actually before before we get into the next segment, I just want to again, big up everybody who's tuning in on all networks, whether you're watching in on Facebook, whether you're watching on YouTube, whether you're watching on Twitch, or whether you're watching on Instagram. This is the Viewpoint Show. This is a weekly show. We say knowledge is power. Today's discussion was all about black businesses. The main topic was what do black businesses need to do to gain your support? We had a special, we have a special guest, Tiffany from Brazen Beauties, uh, and uh, she was able to punch in with a lot of input. I'm going to throw it off to Jada Man um, so we can wrap it up and then we'll get into some real talk. Yeah, I think we might as well just drop it. All right, sounds yeah. like a plan. I just want to also shout out Fukun on the Twitch. Shout out to Blacks Done the Place watching on the Twitch as well. Hey, Again, it's all, about the, it's all about the viewpoint. <laughs> and I think it's about time for some. Yo, yo, this is The Real Talk with Jada Man. Yo, um, black businesses, what do we need to do in order to support black businesses? Um, you know, first and foremost, the big thing I wanna say is stay the course, all right? So for my business owners, stay the course, all right? So most businesses don't turn a profit until after the first year. A lot of people are starting and three, four, six months in, eight months in, they can't take it. You know, they're just about uh, to hit that point where they're about to turn, um, have a turn and actually see some progress. So stick with it. My recommendation is stick with it at least in this day and age, a year and a half to two years, right? Put, put your full investment into it, all right? And if it's not turning at that point, yes, feel free to move on, right? Because time is something that you can't get back. Time is something we can't pay for. And that's why, you know, the government, when they've taken away, you know, um, people, uh, a citizen's years, they just, they really don't have an equation to, to, to refund them and they just, you know, throw some millions at them. So time is something you can never uh, regain. It's valuable, it's invaluable. Um, so once you stay in, find your lane, stay in your lane, all right? Maybe sometimes the first, sometimes the first uh, business isn't it, you know, but through that you learn some learning curves, um, some um, success principles, some success tips, and you, and you transition, right? A lot of the billionaires and millionaires, you know, they've, they've tried at least three different businesses. All right. So if that's you, you have to have tough skin. You have to be able to have a mindset and mindset and mindset really is to see beyond what others can see, right? Some people could just see what's in front of them and they feel the pain and see the see the barriers. Mindsight is to see beyond, uh, beyond all of that and to follow that North Star, which is your vision, right? So if you follow your North Star, it'll lead you. It may not lead you to exactly where you wanted to go, but if you push, 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 push for the stars, you'll land in the clouds min at bare minimum. And that's a great place to be. And that's real talk with Jada Man. Dundo, that's the real talk. I was talking the real talk. So again, 
I want to shout out everybody. It's the Viewpoint Show. Today's topic was all about what do black businesses need to do to gain your support. I want to shout out. Sorry. Oh, sorry. No, no, we ain't going yet. We ain't going yet. I want to shout out Brazen Beauties. Brazen Beauties, can you please let the viewers know where they can find you? Let them know about your business and let them know what's popping with Brazen Beauties. So on Instagram, we are brazenbeauties.toronto. Um, our website is brazenbeauties.ca. And we right now specialize in eyelash strips, um, virgin hair. Um, we sell face masks of all sorts. If you are one of those people who uh, were downtown on the news the other day shout out to my daughter um she, she you know she had her crew wearing the masks and stuff up in the place so um yeah a lot of fun stuff there shout out to wiggums and his graphic designs on all of my stuff <laughs> you're on mute you're on mute wiggums all right so before before we shout it over to brooklyn i also want to take a second and shout out Tiffany as well from the bottom of my heart because there's a lot of designers out there. There's a lot of printers out there, but I've known Tiffany, as she mentioned, for over 15 years. There's been gaps where we haven't linked, but whenever Tiffany needs something, she always reaches out to me. And as well, if, if the price is too high or it's taking too long, Tiffany does not fret to let me know in, an, in, an, in a nice, proper way as well. So Tiffany, I appreciate you, I respect you for all the business and the support. And again, when I see, because I know you for so long, when I see you doing your thing, it gives me that energy to wanna help you and, and help you progress as well. Also, um, what do black businesses need to do support? Make it, and I believe Jada Man mentioned it earlier, make it intergenerational. So the same way that how you have decided to help your daughter with her vision and bring that forth and elevate that. I also want to shout you out to the max and also shout out all the mothers and the fathers out there as well who are helping their kids and helping them with their businesses and taking it to another level. Um, Brooklyn, you. you had something you wanted to mention. Yeah. So first off, I just wanted to say, Tiffany, you are a queen, Zoling. You're out here being a boss yeah. entrepreneur and you're not only out here being a very great role model for your daughter. You know, a lot a lot of um, young women don't have that. So I salute you for not only making your daughter a part of, of, of that dream, but you know, you living, you living and, and being able to, you know, see your business thrive and not only by yourself, but with your daughter as well. Um, so shout outs to you. Um, before I go, as you guys know, like I said today, I buy from black businesses all the time. As you guys can see, I'm wearing a Grand Slammers t-shirt, um, Grand Slammers gear. Um, so shout out to Grand Slammers. Check them out on Instagram. I got my boy Dookie, which is creative right here. Make sure you guys check him out on Instagram. Of course, my cousin, his OK Drip, which is O'Shea and Kwame. Um, love them to the death or whatever, um, to the death of me. Um, I also have Divine Beauties. This is where I got my glasses from. Comes in a little package. And she does delivery, guys. She's a young entrepreneur in the game. She's about, I think she's 16, doing her thing. And I hit her up. Um, shout out to the um, shout out to Mark Decor. If you guys don't know, you guys want your place, you know, you have a birthday celebration, hit up Mark Decor. Hit up Creative by Rose for your hair, my nails, which is always slayed. Everybody always wants to know where I get it done, which is Nails on Point, which is my sis, Shanice. Check her out. Nail Drip by Lex. Sweet Moments, my homegirl Chanel. She does cakes and treats. Also, SL. S A L K 32 also does it as well. Shout out to my home girl, Stace um, Aretha from Develop Me Youth, who has her own organization that's out here helping the young youth um, do their thing in the city. And of course, um, Exotic Kitchen, the Braid Angel. I have to shout you out. She did she did my hair a couple of times with the with the um I got I got my hair done from her and sauce and last but not least O's Kitchen. I definitely have to give a shout out to you guys as well. There's way more, but um, if you guys follow me, I'll be dropping some gems on my Instagram as well. But make sure you guys check them out. So Brooklyn, Brooklyn, I love that. I love that. I I love that. And because it actually 
also ties into one of the comments that one of that Ashley's wigs creation on Instagram mentioned. He said that one of the most important things that black businesses need to do is support each other. So you see how you just took took the time and made sure you just called out about 30 businesses that, that you support and that you see out there pushing. Those are the type of things that Ashley's wig Ashley's wigs creations is talking about supporting each other small businesses supporting each other you may not be buying the product from that person but you're supporting them you know how much people i have had come to me um off of referrals mention a person's name and i'm saying snap that person hasn't even got any design work done but they're sending out the word so and it's it's stuff like what brooklyn is doing that that helps small businesses like me small businesses like brazen beauties these are, those are the things that we respect Brooklyn. Those are the things that we love. And those are the things that we, we actually want and need from, from more of our friends and people out there. So again, shout out oh, to Oh, I Brooklyn. forgot. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot one of my one of my homegirls. How could I forget? She does bathing suits. Her name is Exotic Goddess. You guys need to check her out as well. Um, yeah. So everything that I've mentioned on here, don't get it twisted. I have supported each and every one of them, and I will continue to support them because everything we want in and when it comes to customer service, efficiency, when it comes to um, time management, all that type of things that we're looking for, all these business that I have stated today are are that period point all right, period. So, so, so before you we know, go. Say, hold on, you know, say Brooklyn, you never pay for them ad day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what? You, know, you, see, you see, pandemic show, yeah. We, we, right now, we are getting free advertisement them, so you're good, Jira. Listen, buddy. <laughs> right, you right know now, we're for your outfit. <laughs> all right, so before we go, before we go, I want. Again, the topic, what do black businesses need to do to support each other? I want everybody to give words of wisdom, advice, either to black businesses or to the people out there, all the viewers. Words of advice, one sentence, two sentences. Jada, we'll start with you. Then we'll go Tiffany and then Brooklyn. And I'll give a couple words. Yeah, just just be creative. Uh, be creative um think of think of your audience your demographic um business owners and and do what you have to do to ensure that your customer service is is exquisite exactly brooklyn um jesus come back to me sorry <laughs> All right. I, I know. It. I know you kind of. I know you kind of mentioned it before. You kind of. You kind of wrapped up everything you said. Customer service and things like that. But we'll get back. Well, to yeah, that. the, is, is the yeah. customer we'll service. Okay, my business. advice. Okay, my advice is just to all these. Okay, this is. Okay, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. But um, my advice is, especially these people who are asking people for deposits. I'm just giving you guys a word of advice because a lot of black businesses that are coming up, nail techs, lash techs, all these hair stylists and stuff like that. Even though you went on YouTube, you're not really certified, but you're doing your thing. I totally understand. One thing I can say is when you guys take people's deposit and in and in your in your little bio where you guys say if somebody comes late. You guys will be charging them an extra 10 or $15. My word advice to you is when I reach there, you better not have nobody sitting in your chair because that 50, if I arrive early and that person is sitting in the chair and I have to wait, I want to know what you're going to give me back. If I, if I still have to wait 15 to 20 minutes, because a lot of these people are asking you for deposits. And then when you get there, you're waiting on them. So my thing is, is you guys just need to, do better when it comes to that period so all yeah. right that's fair enough that's fair enough period. Tiffany. Period. Tiffany words of advice to either business owners or to the people out there or to the people watching well to my business owners um just keep doing what you do you know what i mean just don't stop don't quit don't be discouraged it might happen but you know got to do what you got to do for you to make it successful and to the people who try to support business owners um in their way um tag a picture um share a post you know what i mean um a little goes a long way share a post Every, every.